What's going on, everybody? It is your boy, Dylan Matthews, back at it again with another Hometown Take. Today, y'all already know what's going on. Free agency is here, and boy, it didn't take long for it to pop off. Them deals were just waiting to burst out. People were just waiting to put it publicly, make it public. And boy, we got some things shaking up for the Atlanta Hawks. Not necessarily because all the people they signed or have not signed yet, but because all the moves and all the names they're affiliated with have started going somewhere else. But first, this video is about breaking down who they have signed thus far. I'm gonna tell you who it is in just a second, but before I do, make sure you like this video, comment your thoughts, and subscribe to the channel. And that's on period. All right, here we go. So, the Atlanta Hawks have one name off the board already they have signed. It is Danilo Gallinari. Formerly of the Oklahoma City Thunder. I believe that's where he was last season. Let me just make sure I got that right real quick. Yeah, last season he was in OKC. Before I got it pulled up, I'm going to tell you his stats. So, average 18.7 points per game. He also averaged about two assists and five rebounds. But Gallinari is mostly a scorer type of forward. He's going to play the small forward position. Can be a big shooting guard if you want to. Also could be a small power forward. So Danilo Gallinari has some good versatility, has been in playoff situations. Obviously, he was in the playoffs last year with OKC. The past couple years with the Clippers came on very strong with the New York Knicks. That's who he was drafted by way back when in... 2008 2009 season that was his rookie season came in um his first year didn't do much but his second year he popped off and he has been a consistent scoring pro ever since first year only averaged 6.1 points per game ever since then he hasn't been below 14 points the rest of his way oh excuse me he only averaged um 12 points in the 2014 2015 season coming off an acl injury where he missed the whole year um, he, so he had that one year where he was a little bit down average 12.4 points a game with the Nuggets. But this is not a guy that's going to blow you away. This is not a guy that is, you know, going to pop off and average 20 points per game. I mean, you see right here, the highest he's ever averaged is 19.8 points per game. That was two seasons ago with the Los Angeles Clippers. But this is a consistent guy who's at least going to get you, you know, 12, 16, 12 to 20 points a game and that's good for the Atlanta Hawks take some pressure off of Trey Young add some depth to that bench add some um, scoring around these starters but there is a big question you did hear me say just now add some depth to the bench is that going to be him adding some depth to the bench or is it going to be one of our young guys adding depth to the bench and maybe Cam Reddish Kevin Herter something like that now here is my theory thus far. This is what, after seeing this signing, I think the Atlanta Hawks should go forward like this. This is okay. Trey Young at the one, Cam Reddish at the two, Danilo at the three, John at the four, Clint Capella at the five. That is what the Hawks need to do right now because you pay Danilo Gallinari three years, 61 and a half million. That's a little over 20 million a year. That man's got to start. I'm sorry. He got to start, period. You invested enough in that man, he has to start. That means moving Kevin Herter, which the bench, which I actually like for Kevin Herter. I'm totally fine with. I think it'll be a good move if they move Kevin Herter to the bench. Why? Because, talked about it on a couple of live streams, the Drive Not Live, if you tuned in, thank you for tuning in, but we talked about it. Kevin Herter has to be more assertive this season. Kevin Herter has to be more of Red Velvet than just a regular Kevin Herter this season. He has to be assertive, get his shots, be aggressive. He's not going to do that because I just don't think he has that mentality in him yet. I think he needs to be pushed into that mentality. He doesn't have it right off the bat. He doesn't have it like Trey. So I need to see Kevin Herter coming off the bench where he doesn't have to be worried about stepping on Trey Young, John Collins, Cam Reddish's toes, maybe even DeAndre Hunter. I don't, have, I don't need him worrying about when he's going to get his shot. I don't need him worrying about... You know, whose shots he's taken away from. I need him to be the number one option when he comes out onto that floor and onto the court. He can come off the bench. He can be a six-man of the year type guy for us if he plays this six-man role right. So, I think moving Danilo Gallinari into the starting lineup, moving Kevin Herter over to the bench is a good play for the Atlanta Hawks. But, someone's confidence might get a little hurt. I don't know. 
could be Kevin since he's not going to be starting, but I like him in more of the bench role. I think Lloyd Pierce could explain that theory to Kevin that I just explained, and he'll be all right with that. But DeAndre Hunter ain't starting, y'all. He not starting. He moving to the bench, too, and hopefully he cool with that. I don't know if he going to be, though. He's been starting ever since he came in a rookie, huh? I don't know. I mean, he, this, he just came in his rookie year, so I'm thinking uh, somebody else is going to have to go to the bench, too, just to move some things around because we're not taking John Collins off the bench. Cam Reddish needs to start because he needs to be developed more, I think, than DeAndre Hunter. DeAndre Hunter can come in and contribute off the bench right away. I'm not worried about that. So can Kevin Herter. Y'all just can't get in y'all feelings, DeAndre Hunter and Kevin Herter, about not starting anymore. I know y'all been starting. That's cool. But I need y'all to come off the bench and add some depth off the bench. So, I like this move for the Atlanta Hawks because it gives us some pieces to move around. Like I said, the potential starting five needs to be Trey Young, Cam Reddish, Danilo Gallinari, John Collins, Clint Capella. That's our starting five because you invest all that money into Clint. He needs to start. You just invested all this money into Danilo Gallinari. He's got to start. Cam Reddish, development is important. He needs to start. Obviously, Trey Young is starting. And obviously, John Collins is starting. Kill you. I don't see how else you can manipulate it, move it. That's it. Unless you're going to bring Cam off the bench, which I think he needs to start. His development is important, guys, because we all know how good Cam Reddish is to be. I've hyped on it, talked about it, illustrated it so many times why he needs to start. But back more on Danilo Gallinari. I think it's a good move. He can score. He can flat out shoot the ball. He's going to be able to spread out the floor. This is going to create some great spacing for the Atlanta Hawks. Obviously, no, we, we know Trey can shoot it from Jupiter. We know um, Cam Reddish can shoot the three. Danilo Gallinari can shoot the three at high volume. John Collins can shoot the three, make a wide open three. And Clint Capella, hopefully he's going to start to add that to this game, but he can be a rim protector now. He can work on, he can do some move, moves in the post. They crash down, double team to him. He kicks out to one of the shooters. The offense is that easy point blank period, run some pick and rolls, space out the floor that way as well. If you're worried about Danilo Gallinari's shooting numbers, I have been talking about his shooting, a lot of his efficiency from the field. 47% from the field last season, 47% excuse me, from the field last season, 40% from three. That's, that's great shooting right there. Anything above 40% in the NBA, three-point shooting-wise, is great. 47, close to 50% in the NBA in field goal range. Great. I love it. So, Danilo's going to come in, score for us. He'll be okay defensively. He can cause also some mismatches here on um, the offensive side of the ball as well. So, I love the Danilo Gallinari pickup. Yes, you could say maybe a little overpaid, but hey, we got to spend our cap. We got to spend at least 90% of our cap. We got a lot of money. We got to spend it somehow, somewhere. So, we can eliminate $20 million right there. We got about 20, 25 more million to spend, something like that. Don't know the exact number of my time, man. I'm sorry. Anyways, tell me what you guys think about the Danilo Gallinari move. Tell me what you guys, tell me what you guys, tell me what y'all, who else y'all want to see coming to the Atlanta Hawks? Who else y'all want to sign? I will. I know there's been a few names rumored about buzzing, maybe going to the Hawks. A couple of guys off the table now. I know we all talked about Joe Harris in the live. Well, Joe Harris is going back to the Brooklyn Nets. I will give you that number here in a second, what he's going back for. It looks like Mr. Uh, Mr. Joe Harris, if I can pull it up here. Let me get a world just to come back up. Walk through this together, y'all. Joe Harris is going back to the Brooklyn Nets for four years, $75 million. And also, I did a whole video on David Bertans coming to the Atlanta Hawks. It sounded good, felt good. Washington put out the bank for a guy like David Bertans. I mean, they upped his salary big time. This man was making seven mil a year, and now this man has a five-year, eighty million dollar contract to his name. My goodness, my gosh! Five years, 80 mil, he got a nice little bump up. He got a nice little raise. A little, double, more than double his salary. Goodness. David Bertans secured that bag. I ain't mad at him. I don't know if I was willing to pay David Bertans that much money to come to Atlanta. So, Washington, y'all can keep him. His defense wasn't great anyway, so it's all good. We got Danilo. Same type of same type of player, same type of dude. Um, obviously, Bertans, I think, a little younger, but I like Gallinari. Playoff experience, season vet will help these guys come in and win. And Travis Link said it. 
He's going to try and get some more wings to fill out this roster and help us make a playoff push. He's going to get some veteran playoff season savvy wings. Nila Gallinari, step number one. So we'll see what else the Hawks do. I'm sure there are more deals in the works here. I'm going to keep you guys updated as much as I can. So, so I can get this video to you all right now. Until I talk to you all next time, make sure before I go, you like, you comment, you subscribe. Tell me where else you want to see the Hawks do. Tell me who else you want to see them sign. Again, like, comment, subscribe. Until I talk to you all next time. Peace.